Basically, I went and did the interview with the the, the, the police here, the police car, and um, he um, he was like, "Why are you doing graph?" Like, and then he's like, "Yeah, I used to I used to do a bit of graph in school." Go. So, <laughs> did he did he announce his name? He, no, he it was a bit of a fate. Like a lot of this is like going back many years now, so right. I can't remember micro details like mm. what he was writing and stuff. But he basically got a, a bit of paper out in the interview room and started doing like tags. What? Yeah. That's what? I'm not making this up. It's true, and uh, it's true. It's like he was just saying, I'm, I used to like it. I didn't realise people still did it. And uh, he said, I wasn't going to nick you because there were so many people there. I had to nick you. And. Killer Killer Official dot com. Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Fox created. Killer Khaled. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Khaled Podcast. It's about that time, time, time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Khaled Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, acquired to be. You don't want to be anywhere else, and if you are, it serves you right. Can't control everybody's actions. Um, but one thing you can control is your instincts. Hit the Calavision app. It's free download, iPhone, Android, for all your street culture sports. House sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hot Awards Summer 2024. Um, I'm going to jump right into it. <laughs> We're going, what's it, places, space, places, cases, and all different spaces, right? No, I got that wrong. Can I say it again, what was it? Uh, chases and cases. Chases and cases in all different places. There we go. <laughs> um, this is a gentleman from South, according to be precise, um, has made a reputation for himself from late 90s to the mid noughties. A very serious cat in the world of SMC, KC. This is the mighty Alec inside the place. How are we, my brother? Uh, nice one, big up. Big <laughs> up, big up, big up, big up. Big up. Um, yeah. This is going to be the life and times. I have absolutely no doubt about it. We, you, you, you're ready, aren't you? Yeah, you keep the kettle boiling on the podcast. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good one, you know? Yeah, that's right. Hey, look. Um, I listen to your podcasts and, um, yeah, I think it's, it's a great thing you're doing. So, um, yeah, keep it up. Thank you, my brother. It's, Thank uh, you. it's good to hear the, the stories. and yeah. You yeah. see the photos, but the stories behind the photos. So. Yeah, and that, that really does... Hop back to the, the new media side of things and how you, it's relatable to, you know, like you say, f the early inceptions were photography, maybe the odd video if you're lucky. But, you know, you had to be on track, you had to be seen, you're seeing yeah. what you've been seeing, aren't you? It's a, it's a new platform that people can uh, yeah. maybe share some information on. So. Yeah. You all about that? Uh, yeah, so yeah, what do you want to know? Let's, well, let's do this. Well, first of all, I'd like to send a massive uh, rest in peace to Drape, yeah. who I know is a very, very close friend of yours. Yeah, um, yeah. For a reasonably short period of time, but but nonetheless, uh, you were tight, super tight. Yeah, this one's, uh, this one's for Drape. Yeah. Because um, he, uh, he was a close person in my life, and um, it's, it's a sad thing that he's now left us. Oh. And um, he'll be very missed by a lot of people um, who knew him well, and he was a king to me mm -hmm. and to others. And um, yeah, it's a bit of a tragic loss, and he shouldn't have gone so young. Yeah. And um, yeah, he's uh, with the spirits now, and yeah. um, and he'll be here. He'll be here, right here, watching, and. Uh, You'll be reading our memory throughout the whole episode. So, yes, if you've got yourself a drink, whether it's a coffee or a Guinness, preferably, raise that up and uh, more light, more light to the brother Drake. Drake was a Guinness man, so that's the, that's the Drake. Yeah, that's, the, that's the drink of choice today. It will certainly be the sentiment of the episode. Um, yes, uh, without question, when it comes to Anik, it's like I was out on road, I was travelling, I was getting to studios, I was going to different places and I was operational in those spaces. Yeah. And when I see writers in that time, I hold them very much to the same timeline as me um, coming up. Because, you know, I was seeing you develop, really, really pick up speed. 
um, particularly track sides and you know all the other escapades, which uh, obviously we don't uh, uh, cop- we don't uh, tolerate on this <laughs> podcast, but we like talking about it. Yeah, you know I mean. Well, I'm basically just going to talk about my period for between uh, '97 to 2006, which um, I'd say that was when I was probably most active. Um, I still paint uh, legal walls and I mm. still do my thing, but um, for podcast's sake, I'd like to just basically talk between that period. Let's get into it. Where did it all begin, my brother? Um, originally, um, I grew up uh, in Purley. I think uh, Gaps mentioned that on like Purley had some significance in sort of uh, South London graffiti. Big up Gaps. Um, yeah, big up Gaps. I remember. I remember. Um, Snes sort of rings a bell. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't know if he mentioned Snes. Yeah, I remember Snes. Um, he. I used to basically basically go to primary school in um, Purley. Um, like in the 90s, so mm. early 90s, um, went to, um, what was it, basically got to sort of, I don't know, basically before, basically I got kicked out of school. Right. So I got basically expelled from primary school and then um, moved up to Paddington in 96, 95, 96. Paddington in 96, I remember that vividly. Wow. So I didn't go to school for 15 months because um, it was a transition, you know, when you'd like go from primary to secondary school. Yeah. So I was just playing football in Hyde Park with a load of mates nice. and just uh, rolling around, just mm. doing stupid shit, mm-hmm. playing computer games, the usual stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, then I sort of went to uh, secondary school in like 96, started that, and that was um, basically my time was... Every day I'd take the train from um, Paddington Station to Clapham Junction five days a week between 96, 97 to 2004. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> huh? Wow. So in terms of graph education, it was... Uh, yeah. I saw, like... like it was, that's my reason for going to school. Well, ca- yeah. Yeah, that's the real <laughs> classes right there. But well, what, what captivates a young man's... Mind with graph was it the was it the impact was it the uh, anonymity of the the person how do you do that what was it for you that okay well it started in Purley my mum used to take me to platform one in Purley and uh, she'd take me to watch the trains go past on like Sunday evening mm. and I like that whole mm. that, that the speed of it yeah the, the rushness mm. um, that that wind when the cold wind when the train like <laughs> uh, yeah. And I liked that since I was young. And then, um, basically, I'm half um, I'm half Italian. And one time I was out in Italy. Um, we usually take the coach. We used to take a coach somewhere, and there's no coaches, so we were forced to take the train. And I was in Italy. It's probably like '95. Mm. I see a load of trains just come into the station. They're literally covered in graffiti. And I was like, "That's cool. Like, I like it." My mum was like, "Yeah, don't get into that." Immediately, I'm like interested already. <laughs> I'm already on. She, 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 I said, "What is it?" Like, I don't understand it. And she was like, "Basically, that is trains that New York no longer have function in service, and they ship them over to Italy, and that's the trains from New York." Wow. I mean, I didn't know any different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought they were like old trains from New York. I didn't know they threw the Redbirds in the sea and stuff. Like no, that. no, 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 no. But that's what you were told. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, you I, was, I was young, so yeah. I was like, okay, I'm interested, but I can tell her that when she's like, yeah, don't, get, yeah. don't, don't pay any attention to that. But immediately you're interested. And then, then growing up in sort of Paddington, I saw, uh, I mean, I won and all that was mm-hmm. like Tox Prime Time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Game over. Tox Smith, is it? Um, I was sitting there on um, Paddington Station once doing uh, some homework and I saw a zombie fume train with the characters rolling and uh, yeah it, it pressed buttons yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say it's like I was just like that's that's amazing it's like man a graph is like it's own self promotion machine isn't it like as soon as you see, they, they do anything to not let you see it but the moment you see it it's like yes that 
I love that. That's it's me. funny because you get a lot of people on the station who literally get in and out the train and don't like pay attention. Pay attention to it. Blows my mind. So they have like no interest in it. It's just they don't understand it. No. But then there's those people that look at it and go, "Wow, yeah, you've got me." Yeah. And it, it's just it's a thing of this whole blandness. There's nothing. There's just train, train, train. Normal, 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 normal. Bang. Yeah. All this hit of colour. Yeah. And like, if you're a creative person, um, it kind of sends you off. Yeah. You're like a magnet to it. It's a bit odd. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I think it's a connection that maybe writers have. Mindset of writers. We do talk about that a lot on the podcast. Certainly from a uh, medical perspective, like ADHD, OCD, things like that. Making uh, use of the skill set you have and. More recently, a lot of people have commented and saying, you know, a lot of people, you know, dyslexia, things like that. They, 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 don't, they don't only know how to write their name, mm. their graph name. They learn how to, you know, the majority of their learning was from graph and seeing other writers and how they do their lettering, art to everything. I mean, it's bonkers what graph actually does give a, a young person um, for the time it needs it. I think it was something I found sort of in my life that I connected to, and it was something for myself. Um, and I used to go to um, this Piccadilly Circus, Tower Records. Mm. Um, basically, there's one in um, Wiley's in Bayswater, and there's one in Piccadilly Circus. And I used to go in there and just try and read it as much, like, graph mags and mm. skate mags. That was pretty much all there was mm. around that sort of time. I um, mm. just used to be interested in it. And um, so I used to go just travelling, seeing who, like, what, what was going on, who was up. Never understood it, mm. but it, it, I don't know, that's what it felt like. Um, I was interested in it. It's part of the culture. Yeah, it? I think, yeah. It's, I mean, back then as well, uh, if you told people you sort of did graffiti, people didn't understand it. Mm. I'd say, they like, what are you doing that for? I used to have loads of friends around that time and uh, they, they, didn't, they didn't get it. Didn't get it? No, they, we used to just go out, um, just cause mischief and stuff. Um, You'd cause mischief with them, but they, even they didn't understand what no, the No, they just about. weren't interested. They were probably interested in, like, smoking weeds, getting high. Um, Does that alienate you, though, if you're into graph and they're not? Because graph's like a 24-7 affair, isn't it? It's like, yeah. So you quickly removed yourself from... That, um, that friend group? No, we were friends. It's just they were interested in other things. Oh, right, okay. um, maybe like clothes, maybe like... Yeah. Um, so came the graph bug. You were influenced by the likes... And we're talking South now. Who um, were the writers that you were influenced by? I mean, you mentioned Gaps and Snares. Yeah, a bunch of Gaps. Um, yeah. I think a lot of FDC. Yeah. Um... A lot of FTC. Big up the FTC lot, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, when I first came to, when I first moved back, because I moved back to sort of Pearly later on, I mm. didn't really know anyone, then I, um, I was sort of introduced to a couple of people. Um, I remember Charles was one of them. Mm. I didn't actually know who Charles was. Um, big up Charles. Yeah, big up Charles. He's a massive. Um, South London legend. He's a, he's a South London legend. People <laughs> yeah. don't give him enough. But he's, he he's is. a trouble starter. Yeah. His man used to be connected with everybody, oh, and everybody man. knew it as well, right? Oh, it's, his stories are crazy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we um, we used to just go out and just mainly interested in the train. I think I, I'd already written before that. I was doing my own thing. Then I sort of met up with some people who, um, which yeah, we used to just go and paint trains. Uh, photographs weren't necessarily always a major thing because we just used to literally just go out and paint. Mm. Um, Didn't you ever want to take photos of the early stuff or did you feel like, well, I'll see it anyway? I'll early see it. stuff, uh, we, at first it was like a 35mm film, mm. um, but some of us hardly did it, you didn't have a camera. Yeah, yeah. So my first photos were all, I think my first, like, I found a camera mm. Mm. and that was like my introduction to sort of taking photos. Mm. Before that, we didn't even have a camera. It's funny because when <laughs> I, as you were talking about about f photography and how you weren't capturing, I then suddenly went straight back to my head of remembering your dub 
and there's something there was something about it that just it, it left such an imprint i think it was the letters themselves that's like an interesting name but it, i just remember it so well i kind of don't really need photography when you've got that kind of impact right well, I'll, tr I'll try and go for sort of legible um things that stand out and uh, thing of longevity mm. and um i was doing sort of color things as well i think um yeah, you've I been a big colour man as well. Gret, Gret and Choke were like, oh, you're, you're sort of like doing a lot in colour and no one's really sort of... Fucking with colour like doing that. Doing that and, mm. um, yeah, that was, um, yeah, those guys are good guys, big them up. Mm, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, so painted quite a bit of trains, got into a bit of trouble. Um, mm. Talk to me about that. Talk to, about, talk to me about your troubles. <laughs> Talk to about your troubles, son. Talk about the troubles. Um, yeah. I originally got caught uh, stupidly developing photographs. Ah, that goes on to the camera bit. That's why we don't have any photos. It's the dumbest shit, but it's it's just the dumbest shit. But yeah, that's originally how I got caught. Right. Um, wasn't. I'm not really going to go into too much details. It was basically ended up getting caught. Mm. Ended up in a three year case. Got two grand fine. Twelve months suspended. Two years. How old were you at that time? Probably about 22, I think. Oh, that's a fucking headache. And that's a nightmare, isn't it? Um, well, there was other things that went... There was other things that was going on in my life at that point. I think that one of the reasons we didn't go into jail was because my mother actually died soon after. Oh, really? Yeah. <gasps> so it was... Um, I think the judge sort of um, mitigating circumstances. Oh, wow. wow. So I was, I was a carer for, right. for her during that period. Really? Um, when I was having my court case. And um, I think the judge was like, um, I'm not going to send you down, but you're going to have it suspended for t uh, 12 months for two years. I think. OK, OK. And a bit of community service and all that yeah. sort of stuff, which uh, just knocked it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's one hell of a level of compassion that they gave you on that. It didn't help that I got nicked ten days later. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, talk to you about that. <laughs> uh, that's the start of the second story. So okay. um, yeah, if you wanna, if, I, if you wanna go straight into that, get want, into it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, so about ten days after I've been sentenced for that one, um, I was uh, I'm doing some tracks down in South London somewhere. I'm not gonna say where, but I was with about three other guys. Yeah. Um, we get basically. I think, to me, people were making too much noise, but um, it's what it is. I like to be a bit quieter, but kicking stones, just making noise. Anyway, walk down, uh, someone sees us from the bridge. I thought it was like just people passing by. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to sort of shout about fuck off sort of thing. Anyway, I've gone a bit further on. I think basically from where to get on is to where we want to paint. Um, mm. You have to walk down track a bit. And um, a load of, basically, a load of torches showed up pretty rapidly. Hmm. And they're just shining the torches down the track. Um, everyone I was with just sort of bolted and ran down the line. And, uh, yeah, they were sweet. They got away. Um, I jumped out fairly quickly. I think I ran a little bit, but I was like, I just want to, like, dash all my paint and just get out. Yeah. Um, but where I got out was sort of not that far from them, in hindsight. Oh, yeah, OK. And they just gripped me up and... Basically, I was the only one that got shift, and I was kind of like the worst one to get shift because I just got suspended for yeah. 12 months for two years. So um, there's me in the cell. Um, and basically, I went and did the interview with the, 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 the police here, the police car, and um, he, um, he was like, why are you doing graph? Like, why don't you go clubbing sort of thing, meet, meet some birds and, like, it's a bit odd. I don't even think people still do this. And he's talking to me, whatever, yada, yada, yada. And then he's like, yeah, I used to, I used to do a bit of graph in school. Go on. So... <laughs> did, he, did he announce his name? He, no, he... It was a bit of a fate. Like, a lot of this is, like, going back many years now, so oh. I can't remember micro details, like, mm. what he was writing and stuff. But he basically got a, a bit of paper out in the interview room and started doing, like, tags. What? Yeah. That's... What? I'm not making this up. It's true. And uh, it's true. 
it's like he was just saying I'm, I used to like it. I didn't realise people still did it. And uh, he said I wasn't going to nick you because there were so many people there. I had to nick you. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mad one. But um, I said to him, look, I know how this works, and it like you're obviously going to pass this over to British Transport Police now because it's train track related. And um, I said, could you do me a favour? And he's like, what's that? I said, um, could you take the SIM card out of my phone and um, just get rid of it? So that BTP can get it. And he just passed my phone, pointed at the bin, and that was the end of that. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the craziest fucking story I've ever heard. Uh, yeah. That's bonkers. Um, that was basically saving other people's getting, getting in trouble as well, so... That is cold as fucking ice. And then that that was on like a Friday night, so basically that got transferred over to BT's. They went to they basically took up my jack, my jacket, my shoes, uh, for paint samples, yeah. whatever. They were like saying, oh, they was actually saying you've done four. There's about four pieces down there, and they were trying to say oh, I did that. When the truth was, well, I actually well, hadn't. Yeah, yeah. I literally just walked down. Oh, so you hadn't. I hadn't done anything. I literally got on, walked down, got baited, jumped so the out. The worst would be trespassing. Basically, that's it. My other mate got done for trespassing, but he was a bit drunk and I actually arrested him on the platform. Not arrested him, I actually said, what's up? He said, oh, I'm like, struggling, and they gave him a lift home. No. <laughs> Just because he was on the booth. <laughs> With me, they, they dragged me straight to VTs and, yeah, it went down that route. And um, I remember this was like a Friday night, so they've kept me in like maybe Saturday or and Sunday, and I've gone to Horse Ferry Road on Monday because they're trying to activate the suspended sentence straight right. away. Yeah. And they're basically saying you've done five grand's worth of damage. It's gone straight to. They basically had to go to Horse Ferry, and then they wanted to go to Crown. Um, and I've gone to uh, Horse Ferry, and they've basically put me back on um, tag. Mm. And um, I just remember coming out of there. I was just, I just want, to, just want to get out of this. Yeah, sort of yeah, yeah. So they've, they're like, they've taken your shoes and everything. And um, what's, what size shoes are you? And I said, I'm a ten. They're like, look, we've only got a nine. Uh, and they're sort of blim soles. Um, but it wasn't a nine. It was a six. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was like, yeah, bollocks to this. So I just, I didn't really say nothing. I was like, whatever. I'll just take the plimsolls, got out of Horse Ferry, went across the bridge through the plimsolls in the Thames and basically got on a train at Vauxhall and came back to Croydon and went into like a shoe shop and bought a pair of shoes because <laughs> I didn't have any shoes on. Mm -hmm. And um, I did in total about a year on the tag for that. Yeah. This is like the one I was saying about yeah, two stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the day I had to go to um, see my barrister regarding the case, I was up in Queensway. Mm -hmm. I've, done, I've done down a cigarette packet, put it in the bin, walked a few hundred just down the road anyway. Mm -hmm. I've got a sandwich cigarette packet. I had two geezers walk behind me. It was under covers and they pulled me over and they're like, um, what have you got on you? I'm like, nothing. They're like, we've seen you put like cards up in the phone box. As in, like... What, what, put prosy cards in? Yeah, like prosy cards. Yeah. So he thought I was putting cards up in the phone box. And I said, no, I ain't got nothing. And they searched me. I had, like, I had a, I had a phone, a phone I was going to unlock at the time. Yeah. And my camcorder. And they're like... I had a camcorder, so I was, like, trying to learn how to, to do some footage. Yeah. And they're like, oh, right, we're going to arrest you on suspicion of stolen goods. What? Yeah. So <laughs> they just, like, the dog catcher that has come round and just... Taking me and shoving me in the back of the van. That's and I'm like, this is the day I was meant to go and see my barrister. So I, I completely missed that. No. And that's why I ended up basically having to plead guilty on something on the day. But no, that's uh, basically the story was, I was at the police station, and as I was at the station, um, I wanted to um, message um, a mate of mine who uh, we basically sort of ran a little site. Like, paint shop at my house. Right, yeah. And I had a lot of paint. Um, we uh, were sort of selling paint to people at the time. 
and I wanted to let him know that I'd been uh, arrested. So I was like, you know, them old Sony Ericsson phones yeah, where yeah. you like press the buttons and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, I was yeah, doing yeah. this, and I, I managed to do it on my phone, but I wrote nicked, but it's N I C K E, but I didn't get the D, and I got another E. And as I was doing this, about three police officers jump on me in the station, and I'm just getting pinned down and yeah, yeah. gripped up and whatever. And I wrote Nicky to him, and he's realised that I've been nicked, and he's managed to clear the house out of all my like graph-related stuff because it was his as well. And what? <laughs> and uh, it's like a movie, dog. No, but no, this is this is where it goes deep, and. Um, at this point, they're going to do a Section 18 on my house for suspicion of stolen goods or whatever. And um, I'm like, all right, cool. I don't have a choice. I'm stuck in jail. They had my fucking front door keys. Anyway. So they could come in at any time? That's what they did. The thing is, my house was a little bit of a cotch house, as in people would like be drinking, yeah, smoking, yeah, yeah, chilling, yeah. just relaxing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, they've done it. very much the same as we're on so my So my mate's known something that's happened. Yeah. Uh, they've got my house keys. They've just turned up at my house, opened the door themselves in, gone upstairs and opened the door and it's like, maybe, I don't know, it could be 10 people in there just smoking, Anyone chilling. Given time. No, they've just opened the door and they're just looking in like, and they're like, what the fuck are you lot doing in the house just all smoking weed and stuff and they've just literally just let themselves in like. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think there was one occasion where someone jumped out of a window, I, I can't remember if it was that occasion or... Um, house party. Yeah, it's a bit mad. I actually don't know what the ins and outs of what happened. I know, um, yeah, it was a bit of... And a, not all right, it? it's just people just chilling? Yeah, just mates in my house, just uh, just jamming, really. Yeah. Really? Just oh, like... Them golden days, I'm sure we all remember and comment below. <laughs> golden era of, of life. <laughs> Get away so, with shit like that. I missed, uh, missed my barrister's appointment and, yeah, basically got... Ended up in court and got done for that and... Uh, the mad thing about that was, I think, my act, basically the judge turned around and said, um, me, I'm a spray paint specialist, and I've overdone my sentence, and I was free to go. Wow. So instead of giving me jail time, and I thought I was going to go down, there's a lot of people there, actually. Uh -huh. um, uh, the judge said, you're free to go. And so that was a bit of a twist, and that I don't think that, I think BT's a bit pissed off about that. Yeah, of course, because it's rare. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. So I basically just walked out of there. This was uh, Southwark, Southwark Crown Court. What's the date on that? What, what would that have been? That would have been about 09. 09. Around that time, yeah. That was, that was sort of the last. It's the last. That sounds like it's really towards the end of your uh, reign. That wasn't the last of the cases. I got into another case after that, but I managed to um, get off that case. So, yeah. Right. Graph related again. It was graph related, yeah, that was around the time of the Olympics and Yeah, they were all on it back then, weren't um, they, around that time. They were just uh, a bit a bit heavy. Yeah? Yeah, a bit heavy on people. And I got nicked and then they uh, I think they did all that, you know, you're not allowed within a certain radius of the Olympics and mm. um, banned you from taking trains and all that and um, they were doing me for um, a word but they had no evidence and I kept going not guilty to the end and um I think on a Friday before the trial, the judge for it out of court. Really? Yeah. They didn't have enough evidence. So. so on balance with the bad luck, you have kind of had some... Touches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, considering. Yeah. The, so, yeah, I sort of um, had a couple of squeezes there. But in total, I had about three Crown Court cases, um, about three grand in fines, and I did about 840 days on the curfew. 840 days, it's curfew. about two and a half years, something like that. Yeah, that is. That's a long time. Yeah. Talk to me about the lifestyle, Alec. Talk to me about the lifestyle of Graf. Explain a, kind of a day in the life, I guess, of, of you and, uh, you know, the collection of your friends. Like, what? Or what <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we don't say names in this particular podcast, we're not. Um, where, where are we talking, in Paddington or Croydon? Croydon. Uh, Croydon... I say about Croydon. We uh, used to, I think, when oh, I met someone who was actually working with me um, at the time. I didn't know who he was, and I was, it was a new building, and he uh, had some scratches on like a staircase. Mm -hmm. 
And I figured out who it was just by, I don't know, you know when you can sort of read a certain person? You can tell, yeah. Yeah, I was like, this guy's a writer. So I said to him, look, I think I know who you are. I'm like, do you write? And he's like, yeah. He obviously didn't want to say. And then um, we sort of became mates from there. He uh, introduced me to uh, the graph shop in Croydon, which was, I think, All City. All City, yeah, yeah, that's it. We got All City. Uh, we got All City. And... Um, then from there it led on to like meeting other people who came to the shop and uh, but by then I'd already been sort of sort of nicked by then mm. I mean yeah I think I met a lot of people there that's how I probably met Choke and um, mm. met people there Ned um, um, yeah, just people that would come to the craft shop. Mm. Somebody came there and did like a character, and um, just meeting people through that. And um, but I'd already been writing a fair bit before I went um, to the shop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I used to sort of write a lot of my own as well, like um, just going, basically just hitting the insides of trains quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, hitting the floors. Uh, just yeah, staining things and. Um, what's the what's the feeling the first time you get kind of complimented when you say your name to an, a writer or a writer with you know of a, of a level? I used to see other people up, but the truth was back in the day, like I didn't know who anyone was, yeah. so I didn't. It was hard to meet writers. Like inst you've got Instagram now, you can message people. You didn't have that. No, before. no, that's we right. We didn't even have phones. No, yeah, yeah. There was no phones. There's nothing. It's either you saw them out on the mm -hmm. lines, yeah. and then going back to West London, I didn't particularly even want to see people because the chances are you're going to get robbed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I kind of did my thing and just sort of kept away from people just to avoid getting robbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you avoided kind of saying, announcing who you were. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if I saw like a big group of people, I wasn't going to go near them because the chances are you're either going to get beaten up or robbed or something. So. Paranoid. Yeah. yeah, it was a survival thing. Like you had to learn how to sort of move, basically. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one to describe, but yeah. if you're vulnerable, you're going to get targeted. Yeah. Hey, you're not the first person to say it on the show um, as well. So Croydon um, just met up with people and painted. Um, by the time I'd moved there, I think I got sort of caught and I was on a curfew at that point anyway, so I wasn't really allowed out. Seven till seven, I had to sign on every day at the station, so I was kind of restricted to movement. Yeah, that's no way, is it? I had two ankle tags on my legs at one point as two. well. Two? I had two, yeah. Which is, uh, Damn. I don't think anyone's had that. That's, that's bragging right. It's just like, that's impressive, dude. <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> fucked. What happened was I was actually up at uh, uni up north and... Um, they came for me f properly first time and I had a tag on but then my mum had got ill and I had to come back down to Croydon and they're like I got re-arrested for that and the judge was like you're going to need another tag so they came back to my house and then put another one on the right leg and at this point I've got one on my left one on my right and um, they don't want you to cut it off because they're like they'll do you for criminal damage for cutting it off what? <laughs> wow. So I'm like, I'm just fucked. I was like, I can't move. I can't do anything. I just... See... It's... But this was a time when, they, to me, they were like almost breaching human rights or they were, they were going yeah. a little bit too far. Yeah, and for somebody like, like in a brief spell in which we got to know each other here, you're a very calculative, very steady, you know, level-headed person. Mm. This sounds like a million miles away from where you're at now. And moreover, to ha for anybody to have two tags on them, that's, dude, that, you've got to be doing something pretty bonkers. You've got to be of that kind of criminal mind. And I just don't see that in with your demeanour. I'm a quiet, calm, relaxed person um, because I've had maybe a little bit of a mad sort of upbringing and I try and find like peace in things and try to, um, I don't know how to describe it. To, to, to expel that, these kind of stories out, also plays 
a part in drawing certain lines in sands. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I think it's important that for whatever you need it for, whatever people come on want it for, get the best out of it for you. you I'd like to share them because, look, I think um, you've obviously got your um, prestige writers in the game uh, who do a lot of um, damage, and um, I feel that's their podcast. But I feel... um, I've got a few good stories that are worth maybe mentioning. Yeah, I mean, you almost... You said to me the other day that you almost died by getting hit by a train. Yeah, that was... Uh, that's... That's, uh, that that's was, enough to make you want to just, like, hold on, let's draw a line in the sand right now. I, um, I kind of... That was... Yeah, that made me think about graffiti and what I'm doing in my life a bit more. And um, I definitely used one of my lives up uh, on that day. So. How did... Explain... Please, if you don't mind, go go into that. Okay. What was it like um, as a day? Was it like a day like any other? Um, basically, I'll just say it was uh, three of my friends um, were in Paris. Um, uh, we painted that morning. Yeah. Um, in Paris. Yeah, in Paris. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was, uh, I think, four four of us in total. Right. We we were painting, and after that, we were sort of like, I think maybe we got some food and we we're chilling out. And one of the guys I was with was like, I know this like disused, abandoned station that um, like it might be worth just having a little wander through just to see some history or whatever. And um, I think there was a layup at the end of this abandoned station, mm-hmm. so um, we we all agreed to go down there. Um, anyway, about I don't know how far down a certain distance there was a camera, and we all just thought we're just gonna like roll through the camera. Um, just pretend it's not there sort of thing. We were mm. committed to just going further down. So we did that. Got to the abandoned station, have a, have a joint, just chill in. Did a, I think we only had only had maybe a chrome and a black on me or something. And we were just catching some fry ups and chilling. One of the guys I was with said, I want to go and um, go further down because I think there's like a train there. So we, he, we all start walking down there. But we were sort of like in single file. I think I was at the back. Um, and he got, they sort of went near the train. And basically, to cut a long story short, um, like 20 minutes have passed, half hour have passed, I don't know, something like that. And two geezers in high vis jackets were walking down. So basically, um, I remember at this point as well, uh, one of the guys said, oh, like, be quiet, sort of thing, don't kick the stones and all that. So I've taken my shoes off, which is a bit of a weird one, but. Did I'm that tr- hurt? I'm trying to keep quiet, so I didn't want to jog the stones or anything. So yeah. I was like, just trying to go on the wooden bits and just keep quiet. Right. Anyway, all we hear is like, shh, 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 be quiet sort of thing. I'm like, all right, cool. So we're at the back. The next minute, all I hear is like, go, 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 go. Like, just go, in it. There's two people walking down and they're like, come in for yeah. us. We're like, all right, fuck it. So we go we go all the way down, uh, past the bit where we were we were on the abandoned platform. We've gone, we've gone out, and I think near where we were going to get out, um, I think we like sort of all came together there. Mm-hmm. And I, f- I think I might just remember someone saying, um, "Should we go out all together or should we go out one at a time?" And I said to mate, "You go out one at a time, because I think I don't know what's the deal here, yeah. but it's not right." Yeah. I can't remember if the alarm was going off or anything at this point. I can't remember. I just, just don't remember. So one guy, one of the guys we, I was with, he's gone up on the platform. He's just been picked up, mm. picked up, mm. like, uh, like just lifted in the air. Basically, they were trying to filter us out of the tunnel. They'd seen us on the camera. So they were filtering us out of the tunnel. They, they've, everyone, they basically weren't fucking about. It was rap, it was rappy. Yeah, yeah. uh, like they'd shut off the station and they knew we were in there. They just didn't know where we were. So they just were like, they thought we were going to come out the other end or something, but we didn't. They're just smoking you out, basically. Basically, yeah. yeah. And um, mate, he's gone up on the platform, he's just been picked up, grabbed up. Uh, the station alarm's going, Nyeh! like, it's a really mad sound. It was just going off all the time. <sighs> and they've gone to the right of the platform. You know how a, pla- um, a station has got incoming out going? Yeah. They've all gone to like one side of the, this platform and gone up. I've gone to the left. So I've gone to the left, I've dashed the, the tins I had on me, like high up onto something. Then it was like a box, but it was a toolbox, and I've put it quite high up. So, yeah, I don't think they found any paint. Um, and I've gone basically, so they've all gone to the right, and whilst the, 
the rap here, dealing with everyone on the right, I've snuck underneath the platform on the left, under the stairs. Mm -hmm. And I'm basically, it's hard to describe on a podcast, but I'm lying underneath, you know, the lip on the yeah, platform. On the platform, yeah, in the side, almost like a little alcove. The alcove, but mm -hmm. it's not much of an alcove. It's like you're literally just tucked in underneath the lip of the a curb, platform. Like yeah. A, almost like a, as, as thin as a curb yeah. kind of thing. So yeah. I'm, like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay here till they, until I get pulled out, basically. I was, I thought, I can't really move, because if I move, the stones are going to move. Yeah. So all the, they've nicked everyone on the right-hand side. There was about three people, they got, got pinned down, and, and they're like, where's your, where's the fourth one? They're going, quattro, quattro, where's the fourth geezer? Oh, God. They thought I'd run back down the tunnel, but a different tunnel, and they were mm. like, he's going he's gonna to get electrocuted. Like, and to one of the guys I was with, he was like, phone your mate, like, get him to, to come out. They shut off the station at this point. It was a bit, like, on top. Um... And not only that, there was a, a, an unfriendly German shepherd above my head about a metre away. <laughs> he, <laughs> this dog, I can put, I can put, if this dog had an arm, he'd be pointing. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't. He was barking. Ruh, 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 ruh. He couldn't do fuck all. It's like he could smell me. But he couldn't see you fine. But he couldn't see me. And I was under the platform and he... I he was just going mental. His dog was just barking. The alarm's going off. It's a bit awkward. Like everyone gets himself in sticky situations. This was up there. This is up there. This is up there. Yeah. Anyway, the time has passed. They've sent people down the tunnels. They've just basically got loads of police like looking for me. Yeah. They can't find me. They don't know where I am. They've sort of given up. This is like twenty minutes later, half hour later or something. So they've pulled everyone out of the station. I'm still lying underneath the platform. My thing was, if I'm going to get nicked, you you got to find me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm staying here. Problem was, when they took everyone out of the station... They activated the station yeah. again. The train comes in. I'm still oh, underneath there. Yeah. So I'm like, bollocks, this is not good. So they've, they've ran the trains again because they couldn't find me. They didn't know I was there. And they've run the trains. The, the, the driver's cab has come up to basically sort of where my sort of waist is. And I thought, the driver's got to see me and I'm sure they're, like, going to pull me out or something. No. Door's shut. Train starts moving. And I'm literally... Inches? Put two spray cans on top of each other. Yeah. And that that's the away. distance from, like... The, the wheels? The wheels uh, from my face. And um, that train, I thought, if anything's sticking out on that train, that I'm, it's going to yeah. carve me up anything, like yeah. butter. And I kind of accepted that if I was going to go then, that was that would have been that day I was going to go. So the train passed. I thought, yeah, fuck this. Um, I just jumped out. I was like, I'm done. Fuck that. Jumped out. Got onto another platform, got out. Bear in mind, I'm covered in black shit, as in yeah. my face is covered, yeah. my clothes are covered. Yeah. I'm just in a mess. Yeah. I've just had a train pretty much go over me, um, or very, very fucking close to me. Um, I got out, all my mates have been nicked, and I'm like, oh, I need to sort of... I remember phoning a friend in England and just saying, like, my fucking heartbeat is just going insane right now. I'm not so you got way. out and said you got out of the station. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were scot free. I got onto another train. I think I got off another station. I went back to basically. I remember going to another station. There was these guys with like black top security written on them. Yeah. They were looking at me. They were looking for me in other places, in other stations. Yeah. But I was covered all in shit. Because so you're like, coming out of another station, they didn't really put. No, nah, I basically. Got out of there by going onto another platform, jumping on a train and getting yeah. a train somewhere else. Yeah, perfect. So I got out of that one. Yeah. Um, but I had to uh, then try and figure out a way how to um, clear out where we were staying. And I was worried that um, I'd have potentially have gone back there and the police would have turned up at that yeah, place as well. Was, and we yeah. were just like, hi. <laughs> yeah, all that effort of you getting away. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was a bit worried that um, I'd go back there and they were there as well. So I basically I managed to go in there. Did you call up? So you called up your English friend? Yeah. So, sorry. Just for like a yeah. bit of... Uh, I just needed someone to talk to at yeah. that time. You won't believe what I've just done. Yeah, that kind of conversation. Yeah. As in... Um, Perspective. 
Yeah, it was just like that was not that was not fun. No, no, <laughs> no, it was not fun. That that this this does not sound like fun. This I I would put this in the least fun moment of my life, and you to even be sitting here talking about it. Yeah, I mean, like you can't see the gravity of it because there's pixelation going on. But this isn't an easy conversation by any stretch. Like the, the PTSD for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it. Um... Yeah, it shocked me for a little bit. I'm not going to lie. It, it definitely uh, made me think that I'm doing graffiti, but there's a certain point, there's a level yeah. or a line you maybe need to like, think about your life options. Yeah. And this is definitely one of them. <laughs> yeah. Because for sh- there's a lot of bragging rights within graph, as there is in a lot of the street culture genres, um, but nothing holds more, you know, life risking. In hindsight, I was, in hindsight, I think I would have wished I'd have got nicked because everyone a few hours later got out and they'd been roughed up in the back of the van, um, but they got out and they phoned me and said, yeah, we're out. And I'm like, okay, so I did all that for basically nothing, but I was so determined to get away yeah. and not to get caught. You can get yourself in a very dangerous position. Yeah. I was. So it actually turns out even worse for you. Basically, it did, yeah. Do you think there's, do you reckon there's, that's a common story? Do you think that, that that can be... I think when you put under certain elements of pressure, you can act in a different way. Um, you have to think in, like, microseconds mm. and think very fast. Mm. And... Yeah, it's just a bit... Um, your. It's that whole thing about like when you're driving at a certain amount of speed. Mm. If the faster you drive, you have to respond quicker. Mm. In the same way, when things are going fast and your brain is right, like when you're running away, or mm. you, you sort of make split decisions, mm. microsecond decisions mm. about where you're going left, right, this, mm. that, the other, and that can make an impact if you're going to get caught or not. And sometimes they're not necessarily Do well. Right. We we know stories yeah. of people who have lost their lives and stuff. So. From a life risking point of view, 100%, rest in peace to all of the soldiers, everybody that's, um, you know, suffered fate like that is just, just, just unthinkable. But, um, um, but yeah, being so close to the flame that you were. What it, what, it, what it suggests to me that, you know, Graf as a whole, the whole activity is based on a split second. Um, and that can be the, the smallest yeah. Of incremental moves that don't necessarily mean your life's at risk. What it, these, everything is... And while you can be... Get off on the idea that you're a cool kid getting away with it, every action has a reaction to something. There's always an implication, isn't there? It could be just the simplest throw-up or the simplest tag you do all the yeah, time. Yeah, you can do the, the, the most basic thing and it can go um, pretty, pretty wrong. Yeah. And you don't think it. Usually, you could get away with doing a whole car and like some crazy stuff, and um, then you just just do a tag, and it can really like <laughs> yeah, just go pear shaped. Yeah. Because you do hear them stories of like, well, he got done for that. He's done all of this stuff. Yeah. And he got done what that? Yeah. What was he doing? That's usually, <laughs> it's usually the bullshit things yeah. like. I've done all what I did and they get caught developing photographs. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, so, totally. Really? Yeah. That's, how it, that's how it ended. Um, so, yeah, I was going to share one other story Please do. with you. There's, there's a couple yeah, of well, stories. Yeah, well, these are gems. A couple of stories these for you. These are gems, bro. Oh, happy camper. Got to keep them coming. Some um, of these stories, bro, like no one's even talked... <laughs> Dare I say it, it could only happen to you because that, there's no yeah. way that that could. A lot of this could never happen now, mm. and even if they did, coming, all the stars are lining for me right now. Keep, keep it moving. <laughs> well, my other, my other one was um, I'll talk about it because it was a bit of a mad one. Was the London Bridge spot? So London Bridge spot when I did, um, well, I think a few people will remember this. The building doesn't exist now. It's um, I'd like I think ten throw ups in a line. A mm-hmm. period when all the tracks were buffed mm-hmm. and um, it was hard to have anything on tracks because you do something the next day it was buffed. Yeah, yeah. And I, I basically wanted to do something on this spot and it was 10 for ups and that's pretty much all you saw coming into uh, London Bridge. Um, with a mate of mine, Two Time, who used to um, paint with me at the time mm-hmm. and um, we did this spot 
anyway, a few years later, um, I think a couple of other writers have gone back up there, Font and Vamp. Mm -hmm. um, they've gone to paint it, they've done it. I wanted to go back up and redo it all in full colour. Mm. I was with two other mates uh, who I paint with, and um, this was going a few years after. after uh, I, was going, I, don't, I, can't, I can't remember the year. I'm right, mm. but I remember we going, we were going to do. We had about, I say, thirty six hundred mils a, a ladder. We were gonna basically stay there till the paint's done, and basically oh, colour, go colour big. It, just go big and just annihilate it. And we, that's what we, that's what the plan was. Um, anyway, I've gone back there. When I did it originally, there wasn't a gate there. When I came back there, there was a gate, and I was like, all right, cool, we'll go for the gate. But it's a it's a funny spot because you had to like use a ladder to get up onto a level, then use a ladder to get up onto another level, then walk across and drop down a level. So there's different levels to this. Mm. Um, so we've got over, put a ladder, we've gone up basically one two. So we've gone up to two, mm -mm. and I remember I think one of the guys was like, "Come let's do this." It was early. I think it was maybe like nine or nine or ten o'clock or something. Yeah, yeah. I said, I'd be careful with this spot because I've done it before and there's something about it. I can't remember what it was. I said, be careful. They're like, no, we do, we do this all the time. We're right, isn't it? And I was like, all right, cool. Let's go and do this spot then. So we've gone up and I think I was the last one up. And then all of a sudden I've heard my mate gone up to like this hut or this office and he's like, the alarm's gone off. People are running out of there. He's like, quick, we've got to get down. So we've gone up. Basically, some, basically what it is, is a lead strip on the roof. Someone set off the alarm. Right. It wasn't okay. me, but that's what I was thinking of. And yeah. it, it, was a, it, was a, it was a strip of, uh, basically a roof's alarm. Yeah, yeah. And you have to be careful. And um, they've set the alarm off. I'm like, right, quick, we've got to get down. We've gone to the gate and four huge guys basically had just come to the gate and they pulled out some sort of ID or badge. And they're like, what are you here for, burglary? And um, we're like, no, no, just like urban exploring sort of thing. Um, and um, they were like, right, basically just get out of, just come out of here, because out of the gate, out of this basically big metal fence, mm -hmm. they're like, just come out, you're all nicked. Just like, we're not fucking about with you, basically. You're all nicked. Get over. They thought we were there for burglary, and um, they pinned down basically two of my mates on the floor, like hands behind your back. Pinned them down, face down on the floor. With me, they put me against the wall, like hands up against the wall, face to the wall, and there's geezer like right behind me, not far, like from probably where mm -hmm. near and you are. Um, and the other two mates were pinned down on the floor, and all I remember was. Fuck this! And I looked at the geezer's uh, shoes, and I thought you've got like some detective North Face boots on, and I am gonna get the fuck out of here. And you know, when you're in school, you do that hundred meters, and I was like, this is this is what the training is for. Uh, I need to use this. So the hundred meters kicked in full effect at this point. Mm. Um, I looked right, bolted left. All I hear is stop, police. That they're fucking, they're running for me. I'm not looking back. Mm. Phones come out my pocket, throwing that away somewhere, just running down, just not looking back. As in, like, I'm just going for it. As mm. in, this is basically me getting shift or um, me getting shift or being with, uh, or getting out of this situation. Mm. So um, I've gone twice towards Tower Bridge. I think there was two geezers after me. Um, I, can't, I don't, I didn't look back. So I was just like, I'm gone. Um, I've gone through a park, jumped through. Bear in mind, I'm probably a bit more agile than them. Mm, They're probably mm. like, I don't know, mid 40s, 50s mm, mm, mm. guys, but they looked sort of like ex military or something. They, were, they weren't having nothing, they weren't having none of it. Like, you couldn't speak shit to get out of this situation, basically. Yeah. Um, and I've gone into this park, gone behind into like this cupboard thing, and there's like some wheelie bins, and I've hidden behind the wheelie bins, shut the doors of the cupboard. And I've hidden there, they've lost me. As in, I've just turned into like this ghost mm. or genie that's just, mm. just vanished. So I sat in there for like X amount of time, I can't remember. Um, I don't know, I just got out of there basically. And the other two guys got, uh, got nicked. I think they, um, 
Uh, they went to the station and I just uh, I was told afterwards a couple of things. Um, basically, uh, one of the, the police guys that were in the station, they're like, do you know like what that building is? And we're like, no, it's just like wanted to paint, really. Mm. And they're like, that's Boris Johnson's armed response unit. That was basically his firearms police building. The fuck? <laughs> They were just laughing because they're like, you guys are nuts. It was his, uh, yeah, that's why the guys that came out, they were came out like, like ex military. Because they were. I can't even like, shoot you. They could have just shot you when you were running. Yeah. They, it was. They actually mentioned, they said, was the third person me. And people, our guys were like, no comment. But they knew I was there as well. I have no idea how they knew that, but. They, they mentioned my name, and um, I don't know how they knew that. Maybe it was from doing it the first time around. I don't know. But, yeah, that was a... Uh... <laughs> wow. That was a mad one. I got off, and, yeah, I think in the end it was NFA'd, and uh, I think, yeah, it was just a response to the police. They were just like, you guys are mental. Yeah, mental. <laughs> <laughs> Very um, few times I get dumbfounded in... Conversation that that is another golden yeah. Yeah, yeah. moment. Yeah, so I, I can say that story because I, I got away and I think um, I'm pleased I got away. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, yeah, it's just the art of um, avoiding the agents, man. The art of avoidance. It's funny though. I basically my attitude is if you're gonna arrest me, if you're gonna nick me, I'm gonna make it very damn difficult for you and you're gonna have to put in some legwork. Yeah. Or you're gonna have to I'm gonna test you basically. Yeah. Um that's always my attitude. Yeah. Um whether it's hiding under a platform, running and I don't give in easily. No, going going out don't fighting. give them anything. No. Um they are the agents in the matrix. Uh but there's no phone. I was to answer and get teleported out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, wow. I got one last story for you. Come on, uh, if you want to ask me These anything. Are the scriptures you understand. Let's go. <laughs> oh, this is, a, this is a joy. So this story is basically, um, I call it bonus level because um, <laughs> bonus level. I think, uh, I think some writers will reach that point in their graph, in their graph time. But, yeah. Uh, All right. This was uh, named after a person I was writing with at the time. And, uh, yeah, basically the story was, this was at Fort and Heath roundabout near the bus carriage. Mm -hmm. So we're on, a, we're just going out for the night. South London for those South who don't know. South London. Yeah. Just going out for the night, doing some tags, doing some fry-ups, just having a good night, doing what we do. I've done a fry-up. Uh, I'm just waiting on my other mates to finish up or do, doing their thing. And I've looked behind me and, you know, that roundabout near mm. the bus carriage. Mm -hmm. A uh, police car sort of uh, slows down and sort of looks at us, but we were in like this cage bit, so we're like, we've, we've entered the free spot, we're doing these things, and us, me and the guy I was with looked at the car. And we were like, yeah, basically they've seen us, they're coming for us, we need to get out of this, and you've got three guys all trying to get through this free spike. We're like, we need to get the fuck out of here mm. real fast. Um, they're coming for us. So oh, we've squeezed through this gap. They're running. He's running for us. They've. T I'm you can see I'm them with... running now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, run they, they're coming for us, isn't it? We're either going to get caged in or we're just, we have to get out. So we've got out. Those two guys I was with chucked a right. I went left. You always go left, don't you? <laughs> you got it's millisecond decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to make a decision whether you stick with your guy. I thought, I'll split up. Yeah. And. I thought, someone's got to get away if we're going to do this. Anyway, the one coppers, those two have gone right, I've gone left, the geezer's gone after me. Yeah. I'm like, OK, this is fun. Um, so I've, he's chasing me down the, down the road. Um, I basically just saw a gate or some sort of gate. Mm. Um, it's like, it's not, it's a muck, yeah. I don't, you know Rolos, the sweets? Yeah. Think of a Rolo, but with a spike on the end of it. So that, that that gate is like oh fuck all spikes, yeah. but not like in free spikes. It's just not a very nice fence to go yeah. over. 
So I've jumped over the fence. As I'm jumping over, the cop was like looking at me, jumping over because my dreams are caught on it, and I'm just like in a bit of a bit of a state. Yeah, not yeah. In the best place right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's looking at me like, yeah, crazy <laughs> trying to radio yeah. for more, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I've got. He's kind of strolling up. He's not coming after me. He's right. like, okay. I, I ain't getting. He ain't getting over that in his whatever he's wearing. Yeah. And it's like, he accepts. He's, it's like I can see you basically getting over that and. I ain't, I ain't chasing you. Yeah. So he's radioing for more police. So I've got in, I'm basically in like people's gardens. Yeah. And each garden has, this is terraced, so there's no like escape. You're in there. Yeah. You're in this maze. Um, there's fences. How, I don't know how high fences are. What are they? Eight right. foot, eight foot or something? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Right. So. Just that, yeah. I'm jumping these fences and trying to make look, as little noise as possible. Going into someone's garden, he's got a shed. So I've gone into the shed. I'm like at the back of the shed, just like trying to, trying to like, just take for a breather. I'm like this is fucked. This isn't good. Um, and someone in the kitchen has come in with like riot gear. It's really weird. I'm looking through the shed. He's got literally like imagine like you know the security cord boxes. Yeah. The gear on. With the helmet. With the helmet. Yeah. He's coming to the kitchen. He's like doing something in the kitchen. But I'm thinking they're police like coming through his house. I think I, know, to get, I think I know where this is going. Coming to okay. get me. Yeah. Right, so I'm like, this is fucking mental. Like, what the fuck? I thought I'm tripping out here, but I'm not. I'm like, this is... Who the fuck is in right gear in the kitchen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, I don't want to disturb this guy because the noise of the fences and that, you make noise. Yeah. So I'm like trying to do this as quietly as possible. There was another thing I actually did before this, was, which was really stupid. Um, but my attitude was, I thought, maybe I can speak shit and say I was getting robbed or right. I was getting... Um, mugged or something and I was being chased, I was going to basically say, look, I'm being attacked, so I needed to do this. But I knocked on someone's basically patio window um, and that didn't go down too well. Basically, they just called more police. So not only I've got the police after me for yeah. chasing me, I've got another set of police after me because they think I'm burglaring. So like, oh my god, there's just about I don't know, yeah. three, six cars everywhere. This is just, just one big shit it's sandwich. It's just I'm just in one big shit sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, this is bollocks. Um, definitely not how you plan on going out for the night. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Going back to the original conversation with, uh, at the police station, you know, there's girls, there's raves, there's clubs. Yeah. You're enjoying yourself. I'm like, so this is me. It's either I'm stuck in a bush at two in the morning. Um, but you're in a shed at this point and you're stuck in there. Shed. So yeah, I, f I remember trying to get out and I really wanted to get out on the road, but I couldn't get out because everywhere I went, I could hear radios. Yeah. They just you could just hear them on the radios, like trying to like we know he's in the maze. We don't know where he is. So I'm trying to jump over these fences and every sort of five houses. Or I can't remember how many fences I jumped, but I kept jumping these fences, jumping these fences, and I could see one in the distance. It was like semi-detached. It was like a gate. So I'm desperate to get out. And as I'm going further down, I mean, half an hour's probably kicked past at this point. There's police everywhere. Yeah. There's a lot of them. I can see a helicopter coming. Oh, fuck. Uh, a helicopter's coming out. Um, and I thought, yeah, it's basically, it's, they're going to see me if I stay here. I need to get out. Yeah. So I basically... Um, I basically see it coming and I said, fuck this, I'm basically going and I'm jumping out. So I've gone... Jumped out, gone on to like the main road, so there's an off license, gone into the shop, grabbed a Stella, needed a quick one. J crossed the road, jumped on a bus. Mm. This bus is going to Purley. I'm like, yeah, sweet, just get me the fuck out of here. That was not fun. And um, as I've got into the bus, there's like other people in there um, looking, basically just there are other people on the bus, innit? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I basically sat down, opened my Stella, looked down, look at my jeans. There's blood like, everywhere. Really? Yeah, I've ripped. I've done some damage yeah. on the fence that I climbed yeah. over. But because of the adrenaline, yeah, you're not I can't feel anything. So I've looked down. All my jeans are completely blood. like, bloody and ripped. And I'm just a mess. Um, I remember having that Stella. I got off at Pearly. I still had my phone on me, funny enough. And I think I phoned the other guys I was with. And I said, look, did you not get nicked? And they were like, no, we got away. We're at yours. I'm like, you're fucking kidding me. But that's great. But I need to... Uh, Girls for I'm in a bit of trouble at the moment, so can you come and sort of pick me up or can I meet you somewhere? So I get off near a Croydon, go and meet them, go home, basically have a look. And to cut a long story short, I've uh, ripped me bollocks. You've on ripped, the fence. You've ripped me bollocks? Yeah. 
some like basically just uh, tore hemorrhaging me. fucking blood. Yeah, basically tore me balls on the fucking fence that originally the first police car I was trying. To, yeah. So all that time I was jumping fences and in you that didn't place, feel that. You didn't feel it. Wow. Didn't feel nothing. Just from buzzing, like just. I'm gonna. <laughs> this is the science I told bit. You this yeah, wasn't this be is a normal crazy. Right, is it, yeah, this is the science bit. I want to know, just as a, you know, red-blooded man, what when you rip your bollocks? Yeah. How is that? How does that look and feel? Uh. I'm not going to go into too much details, but basically I need to go to hospital, but um, I could not be fucked to go to hospital that night. What? I had enough. What? <laughs> I had enough. I said to myself, I'm going to go tomorrow. Dude, hold on. No, I can't. My, my constitution cannot cope with this. <laughs> right, so, look, you're there yeah. with, a, with a leaking sack or something's going on mm. and you're laying there. What, you got a Band-Aid on it? What are you doing? Uh, yeah, I just tried to try to sort myself out. How, um, did you, how, how did you deal with that? How did you deal with that as a bloke? I gotta put it. It was basically I think of a square, but three of the sides are uh, not attached, and then one side is. So it hadn't like I hadn't ripped it off. It right. was still attached, but it was broken and yeah, it's bleeding. It's not good, and I was in a, not in a great state because of what had happened. I really didn't want to go to Mayday and spend ages in there. Anyway, I had to come up with a story as well because I couldn't really say because, what had happened. Yeah. So basically, we came with an alibi that. You're trying to get the keys. Uh, you jumped over your side gate. A, a nail caught you, and we came up with this alibi. And I thought, um, I will go to the Mayday the next day. And then, obviously, I went to Mayday. They're like, "What's up?" I said, "This is what's happened." And I had like two lady nurses stitch me up, laughing. <laughs> just like, how'd you do that? How did you do that? I uh, just basically said. Um, Climbed over my side gate and uh, I tore it on a nail. And th what, were they kind of? <laughs> oh, this is just an everyday thing. They were laughing at me. They just like, yeah, yeah. It was, was it a big cut? I had a few stitches. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Dude. Dude. So that's another story for you. Uh, now the other thing, the reason I call it bonus level is because one of the mates I was with, he was like, mate, if that was a computer game. You were on bonus level. Yeah, bonus level. Like you beat the boss. And yeah. You were on some next shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly. So you worked your bollocks off for that. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think I don't know how many writers have uh, done that to themselves, but um, yeah, I've uh, I've had other things happen to me. I've had glass itch in my eye. I've had nitro more in my eye. I've had uh, other issues, but that's other stories. Does it ever? So. <laughs> These are like war stories. I. <laughs> You're an intriguing character, dude. I mean, let alone, like, I had, by the way, no inkling of any of these stories. There was no mention of it. Yeah. I, dude, that's a, like, you've had, like, a bunch of mini lives yeah. in a very short space of time. Yeah. Like, some of these incidents that do actually turn out to be pretty severe, you, you, you've kind of taken in your stride. Like the eye, etching your eye and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I was that. doing um, a high up tag with a glass etch pen that it splashed in my eye. And, um, That's I'm fucking just, terrible. It's scary. Like, people use that stuff, but I don't think people realise how dangerous some yeah, of it is. Yeah, so talk to me about, like, um, how did you get that clear out of your I think eye? I just washed it out. Well, I, was, I think I was on a train at the time, so, so I couldn't even wash it out. through your shit, like... um, It splashed, so if you ever use it, just don't. Be careful if you do it. It's a high up tag. You know how you don't like, use it. Yeah. yeah, just don't use it. <laughs> Shit's illegal anyway. So yeah, um, I was quite scared. I thought I was um, going to maybe potentially lose an eye. Of course. Yeah. Because you know, I mean, that guy dissolves through sand and so, glass. I've heard of people have it in their pockets, and it's like burnt through their their skin and their pockets and stuff. It's dangerous stuff, and yeah. if you're not extremely careful, I mean, you have got people who, who think it's cool to use, but they don't understand how dangerous it can be. Um, it's a fire. It's a it's yeah, a weapon, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's dangerous. So um, just, you've got to be careful. Not many people when I first had it uh, had that stuff, and um, now it's sort of. I'd say easier to come by. Yes, yeah, it's passe, isn't it? Um, you need to definitely be very wary of your eyes, and that's all the advice I'd uh, yeah. give to people. Um, and, yeah. And another thing I forgot to mention at that London Bridge spot, um, they did actually send a chopper out for me. As I was running towards Tower Bridge, I saw a chopper coming towards the roof, and that was to check if there was uh, any other people on the roof. Canines, choppers, saw the day in life of Anik. <laughs> 
So yeah, in terms wow. of terms of graph, I've sort of uh, slowed down a little bit, and um, I've been working this year, just doing um, uh, just doing work, and just um, just trying to stay out of trouble for a little bit because uh, when things are coming top, they've really come on top. So. Obviously, it gets a bit old, doesn't it? I mean, that sounds like a lot of that as well. I mean, I think once you've done it and you've done a few things, you've kind of done it mm -hmm. in the same way. It's, I can't keep painting the same things over and over again. I'm mm -hmm. just like, I have a friend that keeps asking me to come out now and it's like, I've done it, I've painted it, I've done it. I don't, yeah. Well, I want to do some new stuff. I want to go traveling maybe and paint some other things. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, there's a lot of things I haven't done um, and I'd love to like do them. And also it's not only about the painting, it's about the people you're with. Yeah, yeah, that's super uh, important. About having a good night with your mates yeah. and I've painted it alone but I've actually got myself in some sticky situations where I think fuck that I wish I'd have been with someone because if I'd have fallen or something that had happened I was on my own yeah and I always rather go with someone now because um just for safety reasons yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I've been on a line I've slipped on the wood when it's wet put my foot on like the live rail and no one would have even known and that you were fucking there. I was with someone that, that night, but it was another night where I was in a place just doing things, fire ups and whatever, and there was no one there. And if I'd have slipped, it was a really bendy roof. And if I'd have gone through it, then I would have probably have broken a leg or something. Yeah, yeah, and just been do. stuck in this place. So, yeah, I, I'm just like a bit wary now. So I try and paint with other people really for mm. that sort of reasons. It can be really dangerous. What, uh, it's a warning from history that, my friends. <laughs> yeah, so know. take take this podcast as what you want to take it for. I'm not, I'm like, I don't consider myself as a big sort of player in the graph game, but I've maybe influenced or uh, inspired certain people. 100% contribute, <laughs> to say the least. People have messaged me on Instagram, like, yeah, I remember your stuff. Yeah, and of some course. Some people have messaged me and said, oh, you're the reason I, I do graffiti, and I, I take that as a, as a yeah. really nice thing to say. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but... I don't advise doing some of the things I've done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be saying that. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Because we do have the memoirs here written. We just, just want to be sure, you know, because once we've done this, there's no going back. You ain't going to get another one. Yeah. Are we clear? Are we clear on the uh, scriptures? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think I've said uh, I've said what I wanted to say, and. Um, it's a beautiful sport, graffiti, but it can be the best times and the worst times, and um, it is what you make it. You don't get that from doing legal walls. Um, I like legal walls for the simple fact I can paint with my friends, but you you have a different um, feeling when you do like, illegal graffiti. Mm. And uh, big up to all the guys that are still out there doing uh, doing their thing, and uh, all the best. Mm. That's, uh, that's what I say to them. Just keep the torch, keep the torch going. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've written a few notes, but I'm just trying to like. Mm. Um, there's a couple of people that I would like to sort of mention. That, um, shout out times. Just shout out, just a couple of people. I think, I think yeah. uh, Spire mentioned Swerve. Uh, yeah. Swerve was a big uh, writer to me. Uh, he did a lot of tagging mm. everywhere. And um, I spoke to I asked someone about him and someone told me he passed away. So I don't know uh, the ins and outs of it. But yeah, Swerve, Swerve was a guy that I liked his tags. He was a South London sort of, um, just a tagger. Mm. And in West London, a tag I used to really like uh, was a guy I used to write 1994. Hmm. Uh, he was definitely a, um, a tagger that I used to sort of look up to when I used to see his stuff around. Because um, hmm. bear in mind, I spent most of my days probably Bayswater, Queensway, hmm. uh, Edgeware Road, um, Marble Arch, hmm. Piccadilly Circus, Chocadero, all them sort of things. So. Um, yeah, I used to just sort of tag down uh, Oxford Street and tag all that sort of yeah. roads. Mainly with, um, what are they called? Pentals? Yeah, 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 the, yeah. The felt ones. Yeah, 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 I know the ones. Yeah, so um, that's kind of how I did it, but no one I knew was really interested in graphs, so I just sort of did it for myself, and that is the most important thing, that you do it for yourself, and it's not necessary for social media. Mm. And, um, and a lot of things uh, have been lost photo-wise. Mm. 
Um, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, there's a period I never took any photos and uh, did things which ain't documented, but um, that's part of the game, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not alone in when I say no, that. No, no. <laughs> it's a beautiful sport. The mysteries. Big up to uh, sort of everyone that sort of knows me and that I've painted with over the years. Um, and who I still drink with, and um, rest in peace, Drape, who was a, a good guy in my life, mm. and uh, who we've really missed. Absolutely. And on that note, rest in peace, Drape, all tight to all the soldiers, and uh, big up, Hanek. Come on. Big up. Yeah. Happy days. Now, you get on with your lives, um, and uh, enjoy yourselves. Be safe. Look after each other. You know what I mean? Uh, crime don't pay, but neither do they. Killer Keller podcast, how that in was out of fashion, all right? <laughs> don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't, people. Stay lucky, yeah? Oh, and I will stay lucky. He bought me a lottery ticket. You <laughs> <laughs> should stay lucky, there you go. <laughs> Big up, Vanek. Easy. Not too long. We're on the next one. Peace. Woo!